from the APAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weekly, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the APAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Marchers with Weather Weeklies. And good Sunday morning to you. Another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, February 21st. And we're now about three quarters of we are th uh, about three quarters of the way through the month of February, and uh, has been a below average snowfall month when we expected it to be colder than normal and also above normal snowfall so far that has not worked out and it doesn't look like it's good we're going to have any help this week as we're going to have uh, a coastal storm that was originally projected to be snow is now it looks like it's going to cut to our west and bring for the majority of the storm probably about uh, 85 to 90 percent of it uh, is a uh, is, is going to be rain and warmer so uh, two things here one you know, we have uh, we had uh, no stratospheric uh, help this month we expected there to be stratospheric help with uh, the polar vortex uh, being uh, the polar vortex in the stratosphere uh, either becoming severely displaced or split uh, and we we noted that uh, we thought that if the split occurred that we will be set up for uh, the second half of February straight through the month of March. Well, that that split we still think is coming, but it's delayed. Okay, it's delayed. So we haven't. The only thing we've had is a short-term displacement of the polar vortex a few times, and uh, we have unfavorable uh, MGO phases that we've been going through at the same time. So we're seeing a kind of a transition period right now that's going getting not you're running out of time here for winter here because now it's already February 21st today. And, uh, you know, you might get more favorable here, but now you're starting to battle climatology as you're heading into the month of March. We've had some pretty good storms in the month of March here, and we still think we have a good shot at that yet. So I don't want to give up completely here and think winter's over. I'm hearing here in the comments, uh, you know, on the, on the, I've seen the comments on the Facebook page, on Twitter, uh, winter's over. Uh, not sure why you guys are still talking about it. Uh, it's not over yet, okay? We're not declaring that over yet. We had this going through uh, the full calendar winter straight through uh, March here so we're not talking about uh, March 1st ending ending winter here's our long range forecast table that we put out on Friday and uh, this is what we're looking at uh, the first storm here is, is the one in the middle of the week we're talking about this uncertainty of rain and snow models were all over the place with this this week uh, very large fluctuations run to run in between uh, the model guidance and the track and I uh, was also showing two separate storms instead of just one. It does look like it's just going to be one, and uh, but this is going to be rain. So we're not looking at that being rain. This second storm signal that was listed here on Friday now looks like it's going to stay off uh, offshore and uh, will not affect us here. However, uh, it won't be too much longer behind this in the first week of March that we have another threat coming up here. And some of the models are now indicating that as well. Now, here's the uh, temperatures here. We have the 20th to 22nd. Uh, being above average, of course, that's this weekend, and then 23rd through the 5th being below average. I do think it's below average, but it's not going to be until after the storm passes. So that being said, this 23rd is going to be too early. All right, you get to extend this to about the 25th through the end of the month, and then in the first week of March is all below average in temperature. Uh, February average temperature, but below average temperature, this is going to have to be changed as well because we're not going. We had such a such a warm Saturday yesterday that uh, this is really going to skew the month uh, much higher here so this below average will not come to fruition most likely will be above average and again that's because that stratospheric help that we didn't have this month and then the above normal snowfall also is going to have to be changed not going to happen with this either this is also not to be uh, a change to or below normal snowfall for the month of february of course that big storm that we had uh, was actually last month in the month of January, I don't think we're hitting it this month here with the abnormal snowfall. It's going to be very hard to do that, especially with rain coming in the middle of the week here. Here is uh, our projections for though for March, though we do still have above normal snowfall for the month of March and below normal temperatures in March. Uh, we'll explain why in this video here, what we're looking at here with that. Okay, here's the storm this week. I do think if you remember the uh, the storm we had not too long ago, with it also cutting to our west here, we had a start of uh, wintry here. I don't think it's going to be like that where it's going to be as prolonged, but I do think there's going to be enough of a cold air mass, and it's because you have a high pressure, uh, it's going to be sitting 
it's, it's up here in this direction here, but there's a high pressure up there. Okay, this can allow for some cold air damage. You can see the isobars here kind of pointed inward like this. You see that? See how that kind of V pointed inward here like this? This is an indication of cold air damming. Uh, that's only going to help our central and northern areas here at the at the start of the event here with some icing, and that's shown here in the pink. So that's going to be some some freezing rain as indicated here in this column here. So just some light freezing rain to start. Your actual low pressure is going to be cutting west here. This is over eastern Kentucky, eastern Tennessee. It's going to head up right over in the vicinity of Pittsburgh or somewhere in that uh, in that area here. So this kind of track uh, is going to be good for Detroit, uh, good for northern northern Ohio here, or at least northwestern Ohio, but not good for anywhere in our coverage area if you're looking for anything wintry as you go to the next frame here or a couple frames forward we're going to go actually do the gfs on this one and show you what's going on again uh if you're in detroit uh you're in uh, southeastern canada up here northern and, and central ohio they're going to get it pretty good this is going to be tracking right over or right in the vicinity of the pittsburgh area so it's going to be rain there as well heavy rain's going to come in here again some round two on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening and overnight. So I don't think it lasts into Thursday here, but uh, right now it looks like it's heads off to the, the northeast from this point. But we're going to be on the warm side of this, so it'll be rain. And like I said, it's going until this warm passes, you're not going to you'll get cold after that after the 25th. And here's a look at uh, the evening of the 25th. Of course, it does get colder when the when the cold front associated with it comes through. Here's your low pressure bombing up in the northeast. Maybe some wraparound snow showers here, but not a big deal. But uh, we'll get colder after this point. So the long range table here, we have to the 22nd, make that the 25th. 25th to the 3rd will be below average, and that's because of this storm. It's now cutting to our west here. Now, how do we get these storms to prevent for these from cutting in the future? A couple things. One, uh, we talked about the high, high latitude blocking stratospheric uh, and uh, stratospheric cooperating here's a stratospheric warming and this is what's going on right now this is not a uh, projection this is a stratospheric warming working on the stratosphere moving and displacing from the poles so this is good you got we got one distinct here this is not a complete split yet one here and one here both the gfs ensembles and the european ensembles are both doing this split okay so this is uh, for the first time we have we in the past we've had uh, you know models indicating that we go out like 10 15 days that there would be a split of the polar of the polar vortex and uh, it, it was expected to happen and never came to fruition but now we're getting in the short range this is the start of the split here and this is only this is tomorrow this is this is Monday okay so this is a projection for Monday here is what this looks like as you go oh, as you go forward here hold on get into this uh, right image here as you go forward here you got a complete split complete split uh, with two separate entities and then of course the stratospheric warming working in between and splitting these two okay so you got and this is up up in the stratosphere here where they have a complete split on both sides so this will be ideal finally where you get some high latitude blocking over Greenland Okay, and you get some cold air cross polar flow coming into the United States. This is this would set us up for for the month of March. This would set us up for the month of March. This is why we're going to be uh, below normal in the month of March. We're pretty confident in that because this is not going out too far for these models to be wrong. Okay, uh, you're only talking about a couple days, and they're showing this full split finally. We're not looking for, in, in in the past during these these weather weekly videos. We we're looking at these splits possibly occurring. And noted that if we were going to have February work out to be a very, uh, very cold month and an above normal snowfall month, you're going to have to have a split in the polar vortex. Displacements weren't going to cut it. Okay, because of temporary displacement and it's right back over to pole, you really didn't accomplish anything except for a few cold shots. And we had the cold shots. We had a few cold shots, but nothing semi permanent. And when you have a split of this polar vortex like this, it's a little bit more permanent. This thing this will last, last a couple of weeks. It does have a little bit of lag time to get down to the troposphere where we live. Okay. But that's going to set up March nicely, I think, all the way up until about the 21st of, of March or there, about maybe even a little bit longer than that. Okay. We're going to be below normal, below normal temperatures and the threats for snow for that entire period. European weeklies also do this. Show that... Uh, Show that very favorable pattern going into the month of March. So, 
the other thing is the Manajolian oscillation. Manajolian oscillation is has not been in favorable phases. Okay, these are these are all warm phases over here, and the Manajolian oscillation has not been in a favorable phase. Uh, phase seven is kind of a cool phase; can go either way. Kind of favors the far interior. This is why you're getting a cutting storm this week because it's only going to be right in this range right here. Okay, so it's, the storm's going to cut. You're not getting help here with the dateline forcing, not yet, but it is projected to get into that dateline forcing here in phase eight. And now the European model suggesting maybe even phase one. Okay, what we have in those uh, instances, these are this of course in phase eight, one and two. On this side, this is a cold phase. So is this, so is this. So if it does to keep rounding like this and heading through these phases like this, you're going to be in a colder regime for a while. And that would make sense with the with the stratospheric block, a stratospheric uh, uh, the split of the polar vortex, and then the high latitude blocking possibly. And this is what the anomalies look like when you're in phase eight and phase one of the Madden Julian oscillation. This is uh, phase eight for the month of February. I don't want to take this into March just yet because it looks like as you head into the first week of March, uh, it's going to look like this. This is what March looks like in a phase one. This is what February looks like in a phase eight. Okay, very cold in both instances. Lower heights, storm signal right along the east coast in both cases. So we do think we're going to head into an active pattern going into the month of March as well. At least that's what's looking like right now. A little more confident in that than I was in February because February we're looking at uh, the only way that's happening is if the polar vortex not only displaces like this but actually splits. It actually splits into two. Okay, and if that was the case, we'd have below normal temperatures above normal snowfall that did not happen this month it is now happening toward the end of this month okay this uh, last week this week coming up here this week we're gonna have the split of the, split of the polar vortex finally and that's gonna set us up for March we think that combined with Madden Julian oscillation going into more favorable phases you get some high latitude blocking over Greenland negative NAO you have a negative Arctic oscillation so you have a cold air source cross polar flow you have a ridge out west, big trough in the east. Of course, this is supportive of an east coast snowstorm in those Madden Julian oscillation phases in both instances, regardless if it goes into eight and stays there or goes into, eight, into phase one afterwards in, in the month of March. Okay, we've had, we look at our analog here going back to 1957 58. Our number one analog had a big, big snowstorm in the month of March. Okay, big snowstorm. So don't get discouraged here by the fact that we have a rain situation setting up this week. If, like we've said before, if you live in the coastal areas, coastal areas, climatologically speaking, you're going to have, you're going to struggle. You need the perfect setup in order to get a good snowstorm. That is still, still the case. Here's a CFS V2 projection for the month of uh, March. The snowfall now through actually April 4th, April, or maybe, maybe midnight, uh, April, the night of April 4th here. Okay. But this is the total snowfall in this period, and the CFS V2 is very impressed, very impressed with the snow that is going to fall in this time frame. Now, you can't take this for for granted here, but there's there's some tremendous amounts on, on, on at least three of these. And one, it's still pretty good. It's over a foot of snow over a very large area. But if you can see, I know it's hard to see here, but if you can see, most of the heaviest snows is away from the coast. It's, the I-95 the corridor here is pretty much the the cutoff here between maybe some little minor nuisance stuff southeast of I-95 on all three. Northwest of I-95, though, you're getting pummeled. All right, so you have an opportunity here in the month of March. It's the same as our analog gear did in 1957, 1958, when you had March 1958 with a big snowstorm, a Nisa storm that just buried us. And uh, this this winter's I know we haven't had much. We had that one storm, and I keep hearing, well, if you take that storm away, it wasn't much of a winter. Well, either was 57, 58. You take that big, those two big storms away, you didn't had you had hardly anything in 57, 58. We said it was going to be infrequent, but when they had the uh, when they hit, they had the opportunity to be big. And at the time of the cold, like we're not having this week, uh, but we we may in the month of March. Okay, if you have that happen. And it's time with the cold. You can get a, a pretty good snow event. So we're not giving up on March yet. We're not trying to give anybody false hope. Yes, there is technically an opportunity that they won't have anything or much of anything going forward into the month of March. 
okay but those we, we are siding with the idea that we are going to be below uh, below average temperatures pretty confident in that and for above snowfall above normal snowfall for the month of march okay most areas are above snow uh, normal snowfall already not quite as high as our projections were yet but that can still come to fruition. We'll see how that plays out going uh, going forward. And uh, right now, we're just uh, looking in the short term at some ice here starting on uh, on on Tuesday night into early Wednesday, changing over to rain and possibly getting heavy going into uh, Wednesday night again with that rain and warmth continuing and then colder from the 25th and beyond. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority meteorologist Bobby Marchers, and that is this edition of Weather Weeklies. For Sunday, February 21st, 2016. See you again next week.